In Revit, we're going to start off by opening up a project from the Revit server. If you haven't seen Revit server yet, you're looking at it now. We're using uh, Revit structure. Uh, the integration with Vault works the same with uh, MEP and architecture. And as I select this file from the Revit server, I'm creating a local copy just as we did with the uh, shared workspace. The Vault integration is a first-class integration with the toolbar, providing all the tools that we need. We're going to start off taking a look at the family. Loading a family from Vault, we've got all this great content management capability. Let's use it. So we'll start off by looking for some columns. There's the one I want, the concrete column. I select OK. What if I would rather browse? We can look at the All Content folder, which is everything in my environment. Uh, we could also hide that folder so the typical user can't access it and force the users to go through the projects. Uh, I'm working on this Trapello project now. Let's uh, look at the content that is available exclusively to that project. So I grab the uh, square column that I want and insert it into the model. When I'm done with my edits, I'll just show you where this is here. There it is. Inserted the column. Once I've completed my edits, I perform a synchronize with the Revit server. Did you notice what happened? That we just synchronized with the Revit server, but we also added a file to Vault. This automatically happens for the user. There's no extra effort, no extra work. We just covered the predominant use case for the Revit user. We're going to take a look at Vault for a few minutes here. And I want to show you some of the methods by which we can interact with projects and with content. We're going to start off with the content. I can investigate the content through Vault by looking at the history or even previewing 3D DWIF of the model as well. See the current state, see what features have been developed. I can see the uh, file and Vault properties as well. Switching to the details view, we can interrogate and mass the uh, state, look for the particular revisions or states that I'm interested in. If I wanted to add some of these, this content to a specific project, I can select and drag these over to a project folder. Underneath the Trapello project, I have a content folder specifically set aside for that and create a link. This means that files are not duplicated. I have one master that's available in multiple places. I can link this master file into as many different projects as necessary. The files are now linked. Looking at the projects for a moment, say I want to find out the current status of the Trapello project. I haven't, uh, haven't been working with this one recently, so I want to get an update. So I run a report that's associated to the project folder. These reports can be configured off of any of the metadata that is available uh, using a tool, the Microsoft Reporting Engine. This particular sample simply shows a dashboard of the uh, categories, but uh, more practical examples might be hours logged against a project or progress, the status. If I'm looking for a particular file in this project, and as you can see there are several folders uh, cut up in categories here for the different disciplines and I'm not sure where the file is that I'm looking for but I think it has something to do with the site so I just do a search and it comes back with a few different files um, let me see what I've got here I've got a civil some uh, scheduling information and the AEC that might be the one I'm looking for so let's go to that go to the folder that contains that file and uh, Let's take a look at what the related files are. Uh, what's associated with this? Ah, the design intent. Maybe that is the one I'm looking for. As you can see, Vault manages the relationships between the files, and these relationships are tracked automatically as the files are added to the Vault. Let's jump over to the structure project, or structure folder of this project. Take a look at the file, and we'll see that uh, there are 31 iterations of this file right now. This is the file that we've been working with in Revit, and we're going to jump back over to Revit for a moment. And I showed you how we automatically added a file to Vault 
earlier with the synchronization. Uh, if we choose to turn that off, underneath the options I can say, you know, I'd rather not have it automatically synchronized. Uh, whatever your current workflow requires, uh, you could then choose the, points in, the point in time in which you want to add a file to Vault. The Add File command takes the file that I have open right now, creates a new iteration in Vault. There it is, file 32. Now I want to explain a little bit more here about why we're doing this automatically in the background. The Revit server manages the Revit files and the changes and the concurrent updates that are happening between the users. I would refer to the workflow, the interaction with Vault concerning the Revit project as more of a contributory workflow. The Revit server manages the changes, manages the ownership of the elements, and at certain points when you choose, or if you choose to have it automatically do a synchronize, a copy of the file is then added to Vault. So there is no checkout from Vault for the Revit project files as is normal for all other file types because the Revit server manages the change. Vault acts as a record of history for the project files. Okay. So far we've been working with the Revit server project. I want to show you how we work with a work shared project which is identical but I'm going to use this as an example to show how projects are imported to Vault. As you can see, there are no work shared projects currently in Vault. And I'm going to jump out to the R drive, a network drive, where I have a research lab project set up. And I've got a couple of different file formats available in here. And as you may notice, you've got a uh, backup folder for the research lab and a temp folder. That tells me that this RVT is a central file. It is work shared. I also have a folder with some sub documents available we're going to import this entire project using the add folder command in Revit. When I select the folder, the unnecessary files are automatically excluded. And you may have noticed in the options earlier that we can configure and choose which files we wish to exclude. During the import, I can deselect individual files that, I'm not, that I would not care to uh, vault. So I'm going to put this in the uh, WS Projects folder, which, by the way, it figured out automatically. The folder was imported into Vault and all of the files along with it. And our 3D DWIF was automatically created for us. That's the import of a project. And it's the same workflow for a work shared project or for a Revit server project. Select the folder import it and the files are added to Vault and can then be managed from that point forward with Vault. Now how do we bring in content? I'm going to use, I could use the add folder command. I'm going to use the add folders and show how this differs and grab a few files that I have sitting out here. When I go to bring them in, it automatically knows where to put them. This brings us to the end of the demonstration where we've shown the integration between the Autodesk Vault and Autodesk Revit, showing how content can be managed, how the files interact with both the Revit server as well as Vault server, and the options that are available for this. I hope this presentation has provided a clear overview of the Autodesk solutions. Thank you for your time.